Hello YouTube, Liverpool fan in Japan here, the Miyazaki man, Sai. Okay, let's get it out there. Big question. Is Ruben Amarin a more likely Liverpool manager than Jabi Alonso? Is he more suited to be a Liverpool manager than Jabi Alonso? In many ways, yes. And I'm going to prove it why. But Jabi Alonso is still my first choice. So let's get into it. So if we look historically, right, when Liverpool have appointed a new manager, which we don't do very, very often because Liverpool give their managers time, they support them, they back them financially with infrastructure of the support and long term as well. But when Benitez and Mourinho came in for Gerard Hulé, for example, it was really a passing of the guard, a monumental moment. So Mourinho obviously having won the Champions League with Porto, the big name, needing his money, establishing himself in Europe, the special one, for example, slightly under the radar, but Rafa Benitez winning the league at Valencia after so, so long after the dominance of Real Madrid and Barcelona, right? He did it with tactical acumen. He had Mr. Rafete, Albelda, Ruben Baraja, Canazares, big, big personalities, and also Mr. the prototype of Dirk Coit, but Dirk Coit is better. The hard pressing forward, Vente, the, the left winger, a bit of X factor, a bit of flair. He's a Galactico that wasn't a Galactico. He had a little stint as well in, 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 uh, in the UK. And obviously, who would have thought, right? Momo Sissoko being the one that uh, follows Benitez from Valencia into uh, Liverpool. He was absolute boss. Before that eye injury, of course, that was a freak accident. But really, this was a rivalry for the ages. And we had someone who usurped the old guard of Real Madrid and Barcelona, came with his tactical acumen, didn't get huge financial backing, but through his strategy, through his tactics, through his tight, tight, keep it compressed, counter-attack down a whip, 4-2-3-1 formation, solid in the middle, Alonso changing the way the midfield develops, the tempo maestro, even shinting Gerard out onto the right wing. Beautiful, beautiful partnership. Before obviously, Gerard went behind Torres for that, that stint as well. Benitez loved the man. I'd love to play chess with him one day. This feels more like a Ruben Amarin at Sporting Lisbon, right? Sporting having usurped the dominance of Porto and Benfica after so, so long, coming in, winning the league as well. And they've got some of our old boys as well. Rafa Camacho, do you remember him? Sebastian Coates with a scissor kick. Fantastic. I love Coates' unit. I use him in football manager. I use him in pro-evolution soccer as well. Even Thiago Iori, who used to be a Liverpool wonder kid, centre-back. Great things were expected of him, didn't really amount to it, but he played for Sporting quite well. I think he was released last season for them. Camacho, we got a good fee for him, never really established himself, played for the under 21 for, for Liverpool as well. But actually, Sporting have Hidemasa Morita-san, which is why I've been following them quite prominently for a while. Holding defensive midfielders, a bit of a jack of all trades as well, quite a hard nut, similar to Endo, but Endo's just upper tier, upper echelons, world class, world number one, Emperor Endo, Biggie. You know what I'm talking about already, you've seen him firsthand, now he's getting appreciation, right? But Sporting are a very well-drilled outfit and the big, big advantage of Amarin is he's an absolute man-manager. Now, if you're going from a coach who is very, very friendly with his players, a father figure, he mentioned, I'll be your friend, not your best friend, but still your friend. I love the Jürgen Klopp quotes. Then you're looking at Amarin more than Alonso because Alonso is a respected, well-renowned figurehead and he commands respect and also on the training ground. Alonso would be the one that pings the balls, show the tactics, shows how to receive the ball touch because he's still probably a world-class player to this day. Alonso could probably still play in the Premier League if you protect him and his legs, of course, because technically he wouldn't have lost anything. So you wouldn't follow Alonso to be, you know, the absolute man manager, but you'd respect him for his knowledge, having worked under Ancelotti, worked under Mourinho, worked under Benitez, worked under Guardiola, all the, the world-renowned names, okay? So Alonso is more like a Mourinho, the heralded figure, the number one of the new cream of the crop generation of managers. And he's coveted by Bayern Munich, which is mainly reported by Pletterberg, which is a Bayern Munich correspondent, German analyst, Sky Sports. I wouldn't put too much faith in that because Bayern Munich have an agenda, destabling Leverkusen, then they're going to blow that 10-point gap, and obviously trying to destabilise um, the position of Alonso in managerial seat of Leverkusen to get him over to Bayern Munich, and putting all the feelers out towards Liverpool and Bayern Munich, are chasing him already, and Real Madrid chasing him, which is absolute BS because Ancelotti just renewed his contract, right? And he's very good at handling egos. But yeah, Bayern Munich... Could be a sidestep, but Leverkusen to Bayern Munich, they wouldn't let him go easily to a rival. Would he really do that to Leverkusen? In my mind, he'd be more likely to stay at Leverkusen than move to Bayern Munich. But if he stays at Leverkusen, this could be opening the door to Real Madrid. Because the biggest problem that I see with Xavi Alonso is if he's successful in his first three to five years at Liverpool, and it probably will be a three to five year stint, I can see him hanging up and going to Real Madrid. Achieved everything he could do at Liverpool, kept us on that perch, won us a Champions League, won us a Premier League, got us in a position for a handover for the next manager. And would you really want that? I know it's a long time in the making and we would have had success as well, but do we want someone to build a dynasty the Liverpool way, someone who sits in a hot seat for six to eight to 10 years, which would be fantastic because it means that they've been 
really, really successful at the club. They infatuated with Liverpool culture, the city, the fans, the Hillsborough event, the memorials, Kenny Dalglish, Ian Rush, all the legends of the past really infatuate themselves in that environment, which is why they never want to leave without a new challenge, without an association. Because with Alonso, I feel as though if he's successful, he will definitely move to Real Madrid sometime in the future. It would be Liverpool to Real Madrid. It wouldn't be Liverpool to Bayern Munich. I don't see that. I see Liverpool to Real Madrid because Real Madrid, unfortunately, is somewhere that a lot of these coaches, especially Spanish coaches, want to see themselves tested against Barcelona, against the might of the world, having a Ballon d'Or winner, managing all those egos and those personalities, wearing that Los Galacticos shirt, whatever, right? Doesn't mean much to me, but to someone like Alonso, Basque country, a Spaniard, it would mean something because obviously he represented Real Madrid for a long, long time, having gone there from, from Liverpool, for example. And he is a type, right, similar to how he has managed under Pep Guardiola, Ancelotti, Benitez, Mourinho. He'd want to experience coaching in different environments. He's done the Bundesliga already. He's done the, the youth leagues in uh, Spain already. He's going to be doing the Premier League if he goes to Liverpool. And then he'll want to be doing the La Liga. One day, when he's much, much older, I think he'd be very, very old, kind of Mourinho age, he'll definitely go to Syria because I see Alonso as a type that wants to test himself in different cultures, learn the language, get familiar with the game because he's got, got that tactical mindset and you really want to see what it works in every different situation with different groups of players and reinvent yourself again and again. He'll be very successful. He'll be at upper echelons, I'm sure of it, because look at what Bayer Leverkusen doing. Fantastic. And some of the methodologies he's using in transitions is out of this world. But back to Amarin, which is the, the topic of this video. Amarin, I think, is a better man-manager. He's been in the managerial hot seat for longer. He's upset the duopoly of Porto and Benfica. He plays in a very, very set way. Now, sometimes it's conservative, but it's very, very effective. It's a free at the back, no matter what. And these free at the back open up to make space to draw the opposition in, similar to what Alonso does and progress the ball. But what Amarin has that Alonso doesn't have with this back three is he loves the back three to step into the midfield. And I mean, really step into the midfield. Think of your Joel Matip, who's a prototype. So if Amarin actually came to Liverpool, I could see Joel Matip renewing if he overcomes that injury and proves himself because he could be a good third, fourth choice player for this back three who can really transition out of defence. Jero Quantz has shown that he's got some techers and he can transition out as well. Even Van Dijk this season has been taking responsibility and stepping out even though he prefers the long ping balls. So the three at the back really start the play and set the tone for the play. Now what happens then with your tempo maestros in the middle, your McAllisters, your endos? Well, that's even better, right? Because McAllister and Ender can drop into their back line to make a five and even allow the centre-backs to push forward. But why would you want that? Because obviously Ender and McAllister can do that as well. So what you're going to have is potentially four out of the back five, which is three centre-backs and two defensive midfielders having the ability to push into the gaps when the gaps present themselves. So what do they need for the midfield? It means the midfield in front of them really have to transition and move laterally to make the spaces for the centre backs and defensive midfielders to push through the ranks to press the opposition. Now Amarin, like Alonso, like Klopp, loves to pressure the opposition in the opposition half. Now Morita, as I mentioned, is very, very good at pressing high and then dropping back into that full crimp into the anchorman position. But Jao Paulinho, when he's at sporting, did that amazingly well as well. And so did Ugarte. You mentioned all of these defensive midfielders holding midfield players. They actually form the basis for how Amarin builds his attack, constructs his structure of the team and probes and looks for those gaps as well. And then you need a clinical striker up top, right? You need your Goy Koresh or someone to really step it up and make things happen. And Goy Koresh and Darwin Nunes, well, both of them cause an absolute nightmare for the opposition because it's just impossible to cover them and everything they can possibly do. Goy Koresh has really, really developed and reached quite high in his potential stakes from the start of career because he didn't seem that or that early days, but now he looks an absolute beast. One big lure of Ruben Amrin as well is if I think the Liverpool job was offered to Ruben Amrin, I think he'd accept just like that. Offered to Alonso. Now Alonso wants to manage Liverpool one day. He thought that Gerard would get there first because obviously Gerard was in our coaching setup already, but Gerard has gone a different pathway. Kaching kaching, he's doing well. Thank you, Gerard. Good performance on the weekend. Fernando Torres, El Nino, what a combination. That picture with bulky hench Hulk Torres. With Gerard behind him in the shadows. That was a fantastic picture. I really appreciate that. And Sven, hope you had a good day as well, my man. Sven, Liverpool fan. Liverpool fan in Japan recognises all Liverpool fans unite together because for a great cause. I hope you had a fantastic day. Dreams come true. I wish everyone's dreams come true, man. Really, really do. Ruben Amarin had to sell top players every single season. He had to refund his rebuild because Sporting are not at the upper echelons of European football. Obviously, they're competing quite well, but they had to sell Jao Pailinha to Fulham and he's a man mountain as well. And he covers the, the you know two men in midfield. He's like N'Golo Kante. He's everywhere, demolishes stuff and he can play a bit. He's got a bit of balls around him as well. Nuno Mendes, 
quality, quality player as well. PSG snapped him up. He was really on the radar of the uh, big clubs, Man United, Man City, Chelsea, for example. I don't think Liverpool were linked with him too much. Um, they've still got some decent centre-backs, Diamande and Goncalo Inacio, who um, is always linked to Liverpool as well. So they've got those, those centre-backs holding them tight together. And as I mentioned, Yuri Koresha as well. But they've really, really had to sell these players. Like Matthias Nunes going to Wolves on to uh, Man City. We were linked with him for a while as well. Apparently we had a release clause that uh, we just didn't uh, trigger because uh, we didn't fancy taking him. And he's taking his time to really adjust to, to the city style of play as well. chimiti has gone to Everton. I don't think he scored a goal yet, but still, you know, a relatively decent player for, for sporting as well. And Pedro Porro at Spurs, the old wing back for, for them doing well, flying high as well, doing pretty good in Premier League. Up and down for them as well. But yeah, he's a decent player today, their squad as well. So sporting have had to renew their their team for quite a while whereas Liverpool are quite well established and we've got those youngsters coming through and they can really be coached and brought to the fore by Amarin because Amarin is passionate on the manager he's the one that will G up the crowd wave his fist in the air maybe give the referee a bit of bantering as well and I know Alonso's a winner and Alonso's passionate but he's kind of cool-headed and, and calm and his, his demeanor is slightly different Amarin's a bit more a bit more fiery I'd say and uh, types of players reflecting in in their coaching role as well now here I've set up how Ruben Amarin Sporting like to, to play Morita and Hulman holding the midfield. Gyori Koresh up top causing havoc. But one thing that's very, very interesting in this kind of formation, um, slightly different than Javi Alonso's variant, but a lot of these have similar qualities as well. They like to press high, they like to congest the area. He is a passing team as well as Javi Alonso's Leverkusen but he isn't afraid to go more direct with pace and hitting those channels out wide as well but what's very interesting is Goncalves and Edwards actually invert into a box they go into this kind of box formation which seems very familiar to what Liverpool end up with right obviously they have their their flying wing backs going up and, and joining attack as well but Goncalves and Edwards overload the midfield with these players and congest the area and really really is tight but they burst forward trying to allow the players to break through into the gaps into the gaps right Ignacio is very very good channel defender here so Van Dijk would be covering this kind of role Diomand is the Kanate of that side as well and Quartes is the one bringing it forward into the central area but opposed to Liverpool who bring it from a Kanate in in this area or Matip from the kind of right channel and nowadays Van Dijk in this particular season Quartes drives through the middle because Morita and Hillman allow them to cause that free pivot at the bottom here now why I think that Amarin might be very well suited to be a Liverpool manager with the current setup and current talent is because with the youngsters with the young heads the defensive midfield players we have an abundance of players that could do that role very very interestingly right so you're looking at Endo and McAllister being here as well but there's actually other players who suit this kind of play style very very good to so Emperor Endo the Big E and, and McAllister forming the base is obviously terrifying for the opposition because we will control the midfield we'll dominate the midfield we've got bite we've got snap we've got ability to cut through the lines as well but players that could really really play in this position and allow McAllister to go higher is the new tank Hulk version of Bacetic, right? Bacetic could be fantastic here because Bacetic started as a centre-back who can invert into cover to allow that midfield to progress and drive forward as well if we really went for a, a roaming, driving, defensive player who can join into the midfield in, in that regard. And who better than our emergency number six, Joe Gomez, who's inverted from right back into that defensive midfield double pivot, but from centre back as well, being very well accustomed to receiving the ball, playing the ball, a little bit of a metronome at, at the back as well. So if you imitate this kind of standing with the Liverpool lineup, and I think, I think Amrin is more set in his ways around formation and what he's trying to achieve than Alonso, who'd probably rejig it to Klopp's 4 3 3 into a box, into an inverted formation, because Alonso, I think, is more flexible than Amrin. Amrin is probably more wedded to his style, which isn't a bad thing. It's a new style of play. Sometimes it's a little bit little bit conservative, but ultimately he's trying to win the ball back as quickly as possible, press opposition high up, and, and go, go at them, really go at them. So if you're looking at this kind of formation here, you'd probably look at these three with Jarrell Kwanzaa being um, easily able to fill this spot here so it's the Gomez or Kwanzaa who can step into the bottom and distribute play a bit of tech is a bit of skill comfortable on the ball which means the Gomez can actually rotate on each side of this um, free quite well as well because Gomez is a good channel defender he's played more at fullback than um, at centre back this season and another name that could really really go in here is Tyler Morton now keep an eye on this kid he's doing really really good things um, on, on his loan out him and Fabio Carvalho are ripping up. He's getting a lot of man of the matches. His ball playing skills, his techers, his calmness, his distribution. He's higher than McConnell in the pecking order right now. But obviously he's on loan starting every week. But I think he's like two years older. So McConnell does have some time. But he's got a lot more legs around him than McConnell who is a bit... Um, his agility is questionable. But he has got composure and techers as well. He's still young. So if you look in that kind of regard, then who starts here? I think 
Trent is more of a Ruben Amarin player than he is a Alonso player because Alonso wants a pseudo winger type which is more of a Connor Bradley who will fly down here and play his best stuff in and around the area and really cause damage whereas Trent is more of a multifaceted player who will work his way into those positions to long shot distribute to overlap to do a bit of everything whereas Connor Bradley's just charge charge gung-ho Robertson up and down right so it'd be very very interesting but I think there's a lot of food for thought here because we actually have a lot of the personnel that I believe could play in a Ruben Amarin system. So you're looking at a Soboslai and a McAllister. A kind of player, obviously, um, Bacetic, I think, is ahead of his development as well if he comes and shows the form that he had prior to his, his growth spurts. Obviously, Darwin Nunes is, is not playing here, but on the left hand side, you've got your Simicast or Robertson. You'd imagine it'd be Robertson for, for balance, offering a whip for more of, of a kind of tucking in player. So he'd manage a whip here. You'd be looking at a kind of coverage, something something like this, because Bacetic did play emergency right back in his one appearance this season, which means Trent, Trent actually goes into this this channel here, Sobosly causes havoc around in and around that area and you could be looking at this kind of shape because what you allow Trent to do is have a kind of free roll in front of the opposition him and McAllister ball playing out because then you have Trent and Sobosly as the kind of long shooters from any direction and introduces two long range shooters into the mix and the ability to get the ball into them and win the ball back as high up as possible to put pressure on opposition and obviously Nunez is your main man, your attacking threat which puts a good question on what do we do with our flying wingers obviously we've got Mo Salah and we've got Lucho Diaz so Lucho Diaz could predominantly play this role and the reason why I think Lucho Diaz could play this role is have you noticed in this particular season he's dropping so much back to pick up the ball in this position and make things happen he is a pseudo playmaker on the left obviously he's absolutely deadly here you know what he's going to do but he has been dropping into this wing back position and really really helping out and you're not going to get the ball off him and he can progress the ball with a run as well and if you get Gomez charging through the middle and these players holding back turns into a very very interesting style now Bacetic in this position you might be thinking hold on a second he's a ball player he's got techers he's going to be winning the ball back he's not going to be a flying winger but what if you double up Connor Bradley and Trent on the right hand position now we have Konate Bradley and Trent Trent in the half space in this position where he's absolutely deadly he can interchange with Sobosly in half space position in this direction Nunes can run the channels run the lines and you've got Bradley running in behind as well and Lucho Diaz running down the wing but Sobosly can interchange and Lucio Diaz can come into this half space as well. So there's a lot of tactical flexibility in this regard, but a lot of it emphasis is on Nunes being clinical and taking his chances because unless you get the ball to your long range shooters who dominate the outside opposition area because they will have to cover the line here and cover the line here for those long shots and Bradley and Sobosly pulling it back to a Lucio Diaz, to a Trent on the outside, backed up by Endo and McAllister being the intelligent shadows as well. It does look offensively oppressive to the opposition, but... What about Mo Salah? Now, I don't think Mo Salah has the legs and really, really wants to be playing that wing-back position a la Lucho Diaz, who has the ability to, because he's only like 27 or something. So, in the in the world where you play Mo Salah, could he be the pseudo number 10 in the system dropping back into the top of diamond, which he does for Egypt? So, let's reset. So, if we go in the world that Salah plays, I would probably expect Salah to occupy that position there and be less likely to form the box and more likely to stay in the half position, which means you need an overlapping... Connor Bradley and it's fantastic to say that Connor Bradley can just get in the team ahead of Trent and you know be our starting kind of right wing back because he's really really good he's just so so good we don't ex expect McAllister and Endo to hold and this opportunity here gives players like Fabio Carvalho Ryan Gravenberch a chance in number 10 position or the transitional position to really really make things effective because sure we have a long range shooter we have Mo Salah here we can have another holder in Tyler Morton or Bacetich allowing McAllister to go into that line as well but there's a lot of positions for each role because Gakpo is definitely more suited to this kind of position, I believe, than straight up top. Gakpo in this position could do a bit of damage. And I know that he's got a lot of hate and a lot of flack recently. But we need to make sure we use his attributes in the right position as well. Lucho Diaz is really good in that position because he can transition here. And he can transition to that position as well with this guy overlapping. Or Robertson for games where you need to defend a flank and want someone around the outside uh, as well. And there's just so much tactical variation that you can employ here. 
uh, in terms of making the players hard to pick up and for the opposition congest to play so it's very hard to go through them and with Nunes being the absolute menace and pest he is Nunes really really unlocks the potential of this formation the fact that he is an absolute threat on his own even forgetting about the outside shooters and the outside playmaking ability of a Salah in half space and Lucho Diaz in half space and a Bradley bombing on and McAllister and Endo closing closing off the, the spaces as well so in this regard Liverpool are really really well set up and we haven't even considered Diogo Jota who can replace Nunes in his formation because he's a pest he roams around he can connect the player as well he'd be more of a connecting player than Nunes but obviously with a Diogo Jota you just want everyone to fly down and get the ball in and around the box because he is clinical and he he will finish the opportunity as well and it lends itself nicely because these three centre-backs are interchangeable with a Joel Matip and a Gerard Alconso. So if you don't want to be spending your funds on it at Giancarlo Inacio for, for this position, because he wouldn't be starting anywhere, I don't think Inacio gets into this formation unless you put Van Dijk in the centre and Ignacio on the left, backing that Ignacio is better than Gomez or Quanta. But that's questionable as well. He is naturally left-footed, but even then, Quanta and Gomez are of the highest calibre and Matip can fulfil the function as almost fifth choice now behind Gerard Quanta, injury pending. So it's just really, really exciting to see. I think Thiago Alcantara probably doesn't need a, a slot in this particular team. Let him go free to Rages just because of the upcoming youth coming through. Bobby Clark can interchange into any of these positions, to be honest, because he's multifaceted as well. Very, very special. Lewis Kumas, you'd probably expect as the, as a wing back in that regard, but maybe close to goal in his number 10 position, right? So Fabio Carvalho, you now find a position for him in this formation as well. It just utilizes a lot of our youngsters, and Ruben Amarin is a very, very good man manager and very good at bringing the potential out in, in youngsters. So I, I really think there is a lot of food for thought in getting Amarin into uh, the Liverpool dugout, allowing him to, to create his box and overload with, with wingers. And Bradley and Lucho Diaz are pseudo wingers anyway with attacking threat and, and play up front. And you can, of course, play Diogo Jota deeper because he links to play from, from deep as well. McAllister can go up there, as, as I mentioned as well. And ultimately, it's just a, a very, very strong Liverpool team that could probably really be adjusted to any any manager. But I would believe that Amarin is more um, wedded in his ways of playing this 3-4-2-1 uh, that kind of changes into a free box, free, free, four, free formation on, on the transition. Um, with Nunes unlocking it all and the three centre-backs being highly talented ball carriers and two defensive midfield pivots that um, will distribute the ball and play and allow forward bursts into the position that players vacate because by transitioning you create so many openings and so many positions and your players can bomb forward hopefully you guys enjoyed that video let me know in the comments below what you think of Ruben Amarin as a potential Liverpool manager I could really really see it I think it is between Amarin and Alonso to be honest a lot of people in Portugal actually fancy Conceição Sergio Conceição at Porto as well a little bit hot-headed and um, we saw his arguments with Arteta I think Amarin is of that younger caliber who will come through and really show his prominence and he needs that stage to really shine just the opportunity as well I wouldn't be unhappy with Alonso I wouldn't be unhappy with Amarin and I think third behind him is probably the Zerbi just because of data analytics and I know he slices the fan base right in half in terms of love or hate like Marmite and um, we will do a video on on Roberto de Zerbi as as well I will do a lot of very special content when the uh, new house is, is built. That book, Endo, Wataru Endo's book, I consider translating the thing. Um, I don't think there's any official translation out there at the moment, but I really, really put some time into thinking whether I can commit time to doing that for you guys and lots and lots of other content as well. Thank you as always for, for supporting me. The likes mean a, a lot to me. This channel is constantly growing. Hope you guys are enjoying. Keep safe. You'll never walk alone. Lots and lots of Liverpool football coming up. We're going to cover it all, baby. Liverpool fan in Japan. Miyazaki man. Ichiban. Janet.